Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here this morning. Uh, welcome to the Smithsonian's National Museum of the American Indian. My name is Kevin Gover. I'm the director of the museum, and I would like to thank all of you, especially our guest uh, from NSA headquarters, uh, who've come to be a part of this important occasion. Uh, to begin our program in our customary way, I'd like to call upon Dennis Zotai, who's a member of our staff, to offer a welcome song. And please rise as you are able. Thank you very much. I'd like to say that as American Indians, we have always been defenders of our lives, our lands, our way of life, and our people. We have carried this tradition throughout time unto the present. Many tribes welcome their warriors home with warrior songs. And these are composed as the warriors come um, back from battle. And so it is only appropriate that I sing one of these warrior songs to open today's ceremony. You can be seated, thank you. Well again, welcome to the National Museum of the American Indian. Our museum was established by an act of Congress in 1989, and that makes uh, 2014 the 25th anniversary of the establishment of this museum. Uh, since being authorized by Congress, we opened a museum in New York City uh, 20 years ago this year. We opened a, uh, a cultural resources center, which is the home of our spectacular collections uh, in Suitland, Maryland, 15 years ago. And we opened this museum on the National Mall in 2004, almost 10 years ago. So uh, this is our anniversary year, and we're very happy that this event becomes a part of our anniversary celebration. It's now my pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest, Mr. Trumbull Soul. He is the Deputy Chief of Staff at the National Security Agency. There he is responsible for direct support to the Director and Deputy Director of the NSA and leading organizations that encompass all enterprise level support, staff, and enabling functions. In addition, he serves as the Senior Field Advocate for NSA personnel assigned around the world. Please welcome Mr. Soule.
Well, good morning, and thank you for that welcome. And it's really great to be in this wonderful facility. We were remarking just a moment ago how fantastic this atrium is as a location. It's a real honor to be here today as we thank the, uh, Mr. Gover and the National Museum of the American Indian to host this event. The National Security Agency's uh, Hall of Cryptologic Honor, which is located in our National Cryptologic Museum at Fort Meade, Maryland, was created in 1999 as a way to honor the heroes of cryptology, the men and women who've laid the foundation for the work that we do today at NSA. In November 2013, we were pleased to add the Native American Code Talkers to our Hall of Honor. This was the first time we ever honored a group of individuals rather than an individual alone. This morning, we're privileged to be here to present a plaque honoring those men in, uh, to the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of the American Indian. We're th thrilled that Mr. Gover has agreed that this is the perfect home for that plaque honoring all the Native Americans who used their language skills to advance the military missions in World War I and World War II to protect their fellow servicemen. From our earliest days, brave men and women have used cryptology in many forms to keep the nation's secrets safe. And we at the National Security Agency today are well aware that we continue a legacy of silent service to the nation and have the debt that we owe to people like the Native American code talkers who went before us. Despite what you may have heard recently about NSA, I want to reiterate to you that as in the past, NSA and its cryptologic mission exist only to protect and serve our nation, our leaders, and our fellow Americans. Our workforce is dedicated to maintaining the freedoms our nation now enjoys, as our predecessors were dedicated to the freedoms that our nation enjoys. We have supported the fight around the globe. The Native American code talkers played a key role in protecting our military and our allies during World War I and World War II. During World War I, the Choctaw code talkers pioneered the use of Native American languages as military code. And during that war, six tribes sent people to send coded messages about troop movements and enemy positions by radio and wire. These messages were never decoded. It was a perfect cryptologic record. In World War II, code talkers from at least 16 tribes served in military service. Their unique languages served as one layer of code and they also developed metaphors as code to add a second level of encryption. For example, they used the word hummingbird to mean fighter plane and the word tortoise to mean tank. As in the first war, those codes were never broken. As a side note, I'm told just recently, I learned that the uh, Comanche code talkers developed the, uh, the use of metaphors while they were assigned at Fort Gordon, Georgia, where we've now opened a facility and there are still NSA facilities working, uh, NSA personnel working today. Six Navajo code talkers were uh, working nonstop at Iwo Jima during the invasion in early 1945. It's reported that if it wasn't for these code talkers, the island never would have been taken. So I have a personal debt of gratitude because my uncle fought at Iwo Jima and he probably came home thanks to the service of a Navajo code talker. These are just a few of the examples of the accomplishments of the code talkers whose work saved thousands of lives at the ri uh, risk of their own. We're pleased to highlight the contribution of all the code talkers, not only with this induction into our Hall of Honor, but also in a permanent display at our National Cryptologic Museum where those interested in the history of cryptology can learn on the contributions to the nation's history. We would invite you to attend and visit. The Native American code talkers utilize their special skills and knowledge in creative and innovative ways to protect information at a critical time in our nation's history. They serve bravely in the most dangerous situations imaginable. They nonetheless answered the call to duty, many of them as volunteers. They were dedicated to their nation the mission, the allies, and their comrades. They served, uh, their dedication saved countless lives and set an example for service, sacrifice, and duty that endures to this day. 
the Native American code talkers achieve success by utilizing their unique language skills, cultural traditions, and personal experiences to solve a critical problem in a way that the enemy could not penetrate. Today at NSA, we welcome an incredible diversity of language, cultures, and experiences as we try to solve the problems that face us today. We don't want to try and solve a problem through a single lens, but through many different angles, and to reach, reach creative and innovative solutions to the problems that NSA is well known to solve. We're proud to stand today as the latest generation of silent warriors to honor our predecessors, the Native American code talkers, and all those who came before us as we continue in the mission they so proudly served and they so well served, the mission of protecting the United States and its people. And now, Mr. Gover, if you'll join me, we'll unveil the plaque. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Stoll and, uh, Stoll and all the staff here from the National Security Agency. Uh, I, too, have a, a personal story related to uh, the native code talkers. As it happened, um, my grandfather and uh, Phil Gover and his brother Grant uh, both served in World War II. And they fought in Sicily and in Italy. Um, my grandfather uh, was, his war ended um, when he was terribly wounded at Monte Cassino. And uh, sadly, his brother Grant uh, was killed in France a few months later. Uh, but I grew up with stories about, uh, not so much about code talkers as simply the service of, uh, of Native people uh, to the United States. But they did tell stories about how uh, on the battlefield they would use the Pawnee language to communicate instructions to each other or simply to offer encouragement. And of course, the enemy would have no idea uh, what it was they were hearing. Um, and so they, they realized very quickly uh, and innovatively that their language was a tool that they could use uh, to survive uh, and advance in the war. Now, it may seem odd to some people that Native Americans who've often suffered under misguided U.S. policies would nevertheless be American patriots. But as Navajo code talker John Brown Jr. said, I like to think among Indian people that I defended their religion, their belief, their land, their stories, and all of that. So as they fought for their country, they also fought for the Native nations. As you've heard during World War I and World War II, thousands of American Indians joined the U.S. Armed Forces and many found that their traditional languages were useful on the battlefield. Very soon, native speakers from the Assiniboine, Cherokee, Chip Chippewa, Choctaw, Comanche, Hopi, Kiowa, Menominee, Muscogee, Navajo, Oneida, Pawnee, and Sac and Fox nations were, were used to communicate sensitive information. The U.S. asked some of them to develop secret codes, communications based on their languages, and America's enemies never deciphered the messages they sent. Code talkers, as they came to be known after World War II, are 20th century American Indian patriots and heroes who significantly aided the victories of the U.S. and its allies. These soldiers, however, built on an old tradition. Native people had served, in, served the U.S. in every major conflict beginning with the Revolutionary War. The United States 
and Indian country have a long tradition of military cooperation. Even as we speak, Native American troops are serving the United States around the world, and we are grateful for their continued service. For many Native soldiers, their services to the U.S. is a matter of honoring the treaties between the U.S. and the Native nations. In their treaties, some Native nations promise not just peace with the U.S., but alliance as well. So when the U.S. goes to war, these Native nations go as well. And they do so notwithstanding the many times the U.S. failed to meet its treaty commitments and notwithstanding the disadvantages imposed on them solely because of their heritage and the color of their skin. Patriots to the core, they serve their country and their Native nations with great distinction. We may never truly know how many Native Americans served as code talkers. We know of approximately four to 500 Native Americans who volunteered their service and their languages to the United States, but almost surely there are more. We also should acknowledge uh, the few living code talkers who remain and those who have recently departed for the next world. Arthur J. Hubbard Sr. passed away recently at the age of 102 at his home at the Navajo Nation. Only a week ago, we learned of the passing of Edmund Harjo from the Seminole Nation of Oklahoma. Mr. Harjo was here just this past November to receive the Congressional Medal struck in honor of the Code Talkers. Losing heroes like Arthur and Edmund reminds us how important it is that we keep the story alive. And that's why it's so important that you're here today, so important that these, that these plaques will remain uh, on display at NSA headquarters and here at the National Museum of the American Indian. The museum's popular traveling exhibition, Native Words, Native Warriors, is displayed over here and tells the remarkable story of veterans from more than 33 tribes. So we invite all of you to take some time and learn more about these heroes. As we continue to explore all these brave warriors did for us, I'm sure you'll agree that our small efforts today are the very least we can do for them. So thank you again for being here, and I would like to call upon Dennis Zotai again to join us for a song in honor of these American heroes. As we continue our warrior tradition, each year new songs are composed to bring back warriors and honor them. At this time, I'd like to share a song that was composed during the World War II era.
And with that, we invite you to join us for some refreshments provided by our Mitsutom Native Foods Cafe. Thank you for being here.